Hey, you got those files for me? Huh? Oh, yep, got it right here. By the way, there is one thing that you should probably know. It's formatted NTFS, so yeah, good luck. Now, why would you format it to an NTFS? You know that I work on a Mac and that a Mac can't read and write to those drives. Really, you don't say. I had no idea. Hmm, that is a little bit of a pickle, isn't it? You know, if you had just formatted it as an XFAT, then it would have been a lot easier. We both could have just used the drive. I don't know, NTFS just works better on Windows. You know, a grown-ups computer. You know, you, you did this on purpose, didn't you? This is your whole weird PCs are better than Macs thing. You did this just to annoy me, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm gonna do next time you need files, right? I'm going to format the drive APFS and then I'm going to encrypt it and I'm not going to tell you the password. Well, that's not a very mature thing to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. This coming from the guy who purposefully formatted the drive. So it would be extremely difficult, if not impossible for me to use. Okay. Why? Well, I, I need to get back to work. So do you want the files or not? You're a child. You know that? I know you are, but what am I? So if you've ever experienced it before, it can be a little bit of a challenge working between a PC and a Mac or working between people who have a PC and a Mac. And one of the things that I've personally bumped into a number of times in the past is working with NTFS drives. If you're not already familiar with it, you know that that is the native file system that Windows or PCs operate in. And since Macs and PCs are different, they cannot interchangeably work within that file format. Now there is something called XFAT, which is a way you can format, say an external hard drive that will enable you to work with both a Mac and a PC in order to both read and write to the drive. Now, technically a Mac can read files on an NTFS formatted hard drive, but it cannot write to it. So in other words, if you open up a drive that's formatted NTFS on your Mac, you'll be able to see it mount and you'll be able to see that it recognizes it as a drive. However, you'll only be able to drag and copy files off of it. You won't be able to take files and copy it onto the drive, i.e. writing to the drive. This means that if you want to share the drive in order to work between different people who are both working on Mac and PC, you won't be able to do that. This is why SD cards and all sorts of different smaller storage devices are typically coming in either a FAT format or a X FAT format because they work between both Mac and PC. But again, there's gonna be reasons why a PC user is gonna wanna have that drive formatted NTFS, just like a Mac user is probably going to want their drives to be formatted APFS. We're not gonna get into all those nerdy details. The bottom line is that you have an NTFS drive and you need to be able to read and write to it on a Mac. Fortunately, I came across a piece of software that enables you to do that, and it's called iBoySoft NTFS for Mac. But essentially what it does, once you finish installing it, is it enables you to read and write and recognize NTFS formatted drives just as you would any other type of drive. One of the other really cool features that I found when I was playing around with the software is not only can it recognize and read and write to NTFS drives, you can now directly from within disk utility, which is typically where you'll erase or format your hard drives to other different formats or versions, you can now erase and format a drive to Windows NTFS from directly within the native built-in Mac disk utility. And one of the other cool things is that it also works with all of the new M1 chips. So if you're getting a new Mac and you're worried about whether or not this is going to work moving forward, chances are it's going to. So if you go directly to the company's website, you can get it for, I think it is $20 a year. It looks like it was a subscription, but I personally use a service by the name of SetApp. And if you're not already familiar with SetApp, they're essentially a subscription-based service that gives you monthly access to a massive library of Mac apps. They've got a growing collection. I use so many of these different apps that I've actually lost track of them. And it's been super helpful for boosting my productivity and just making 
making my Mac work better. Now I am not sponsored by them, but I do have an affiliate link for set app if you would like to check them out as well as to help the channel. So that's pretty much it. A really quick tip for you guys today. This is just one of those tools that I didn't realize that actually existed until I did a little bit of research to find out that it did. And now it's just become part of my daily workflow and hopefully it will save you some time and it will become a daily part of your workflow as well. Now, speaking of useful tools, I've actually put together a collection of all my favorite apps and tools that I use all of the time, which I will leave a link in the description if you'd like to sign up to get free access to that as well. Other than that, if you found this video useful, be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Also leave me a comment if there is a tool or app that you've recently discovered that you really like, or if there's a tool or app that you've been looking for that you'd like me to cover in a future video. I always have a lot of fun researching and finding different tools and apps really just to make your life easier. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.